Welcome to an introduction to managerial accounting, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com. This first podcast will introduce the purpose of managerial accounting and the differences compared to financial accounting. Key terms will be defined and the importance of ethics introduced. Managerial accounting is important for preparing information to take internal decisions. These decisions help in planning for the coming accounting period and in the control of operations. To ensure effective control, information is needed to prepare budgets so that targets are clear. Information will also insist, assist in evaluation of processes and of management of those processes. To make good decisions, the information must be accurate, relevant and recent. Managerial accounting deals with decisions that affect the future of the business, whilst financial accounting reports on what has already occurred. Managerial accountants are a key to the planning process, and their work helps to set out goals and to set targets. The targets can relate to costs and also the quantity or amount of production of goods. At the end of a period, the actual results can then be compared to the targets set. Budgets will be set so that income and expenditure are assessed, and there should be sufficient cash to meet payments that become due at any time during the period. The most common budget is the cash flow budget, but managerial accountants are also interested in profit budgets and in production budgets. Control is achieved by setting targets, measuring performance, and then by comparing or evaluating the performance against the target that was set. Evaluation can be of operations, such as the performance of a production line, or of a robotic system that needs resetting for each different run. Evaluation will also take place for supervisors or managers, and determine how they meet any targets set that involve labour. For evaluation to be useful, it must be clear. Measuring a performance of a supervisor where the line production target has been missed due to lack of materials must take these unforeseen circumstances into account. However, persistent shortages of components for assembly would mean that changes needed and, and they could be determined to ensure that the assemblies flowed more smoothly. Evaluation should address simple questions. Were targets met? Was the plan followed? Did any circumstances change? And was there a plan B? Performance reports will then compare the actual results to the plan. The process could be viewed as cyclical. Planning and evaluation should be continuous for any business. From planning comes implementation that leads to outcomes. The outcomes are compared to plans and evaluation takes place. A review of evaluation leads to further decisions and, if needed, changes in plans. The cycle then begins again. A typical report compares actual against the budget set. In this case, the activity is measured in terms of expense on labour, materials, rent, depreciation and other overheads. Here we can see a saving on materials, possibly caused by a change in price, and overspending on labour and other overheads. The report would explain why there has been a change in materials cost, and why there have been additional labour and overhead costs. Managerial accounting is mainly intended for internal users, whilst financial accounting is mainly for external users. The use of GAAP is optional for managerial accounting, but it is a requirement for financial accounting. Managerial reports can be as detailed as required, whilst financial reports are usually in summary form. Finally, managerial accounting is directed towards the future activity of the business, whilst financial accounting reports largely on events that have taken place. Managerial accountants distinguish between variable costs and fixed costs. Variable costs change with the volume of activity, 
whilst fixed costs will remain the same, even if the volume of activity changes. Flim products make heaters, and variable costs include materials such as plastic casings, elements and cabling, whilst fixed costs include depreciation and rent. The table shows how costs vary if the volume of production is changed, in this case from 2,000 heaters to 4,000 heaters. For variable costs, the unit cost, the amount for each casing for example, will remain the same. However, fixed costs are being shared among a larger number of units, so those unit costs will decrease. The term sunk costs is applied to costs that have been incurred and cannot be recovered. If Flim spends money on advertising a new product that is then withdrawn before production commences, then the advertising money is a sunk cost. Opportunity costs are the costs of choosing one alternative over another. The potential revenue from taking one alternative, less the costs incurred, represents opportunity cost. However, even though the opportunity costs can be shown to exist, the alternative may not be chosen. In trying to meet extra orders, Flim products may not be able to meet the requirements of other customers, and regular customers could be lost. Direct costs are those that can be traced to a particular product or service provided. Indirect costs cannot be traced to individual products. Items such as rent and insurance are usually indirect costs, whilst materials that are used to make a product are direct costs. If a machine is used to make casings, then the cost of use of the machine, including depreciation, could be considered a direct cost only if the usage can be traced for each product. Evaluation of managerial performance involves an understanding of control. The manager of a production line will usually have no control over rent and insurance, so these should not be considered during an evaluation. However, a manager may have control over choosing suppliers for purchase of materials, and so this would be taken into account for evaluation. Evaluations must be based on controllable costs only. Managerial accounting makes use of incremental analysis. This is the difference between alternatives. The difference in revenue is termed incremental revenue, the difference in cost is incremental cost, and the difference between these is incremental profit. When setting targets, it is important for managerial accountants to determine whether the target they set will be measured correctly. Setting out the wrong type of measurement can influence behaviour and produce unintended results. Consider this example from a college. The first target was to fund only on the basis of students who successfully complete a course. The behaviour observed was that weak students were not being given the opportunity to study. The revised target was to fund on the basis of students taking courses. The behaviour observed was to admit all students regardless of their ability or the value of the course to their studies. The third target was revised to link funding so that both the number of students taking a course and the number completing the course are linked to this funding. What do you think the possible behaviour might be? Managerial accounting has to be aware of current trends in information technology and the way this affects suppliers and marketing. The supply of materials is more competitive, reducing prices. Competition is very high for sales, and larger firms trade on a global rather than a national basis. More information can be obtained speedily, and this allows changes to be made quickly once problems or successes are spotted. Managerial accounting now places a value on ethical decisions. A change came about with the passing of the Sarbanes-Oxley Act in the USA, which required chief executive officers and chief financial officers to certify accuracy of financial statements to the best of their knowledge. This is still considered to be a very weak statement by many. Greater segregation of tasks was required, 
particularly from auditors and reports on internal control systems were required. Sarbanes-Oxley produced some legal requirements, but it can be argued that many ethical decisions are not concerned with legal requirements, but are concerned with moral judgments or environmental decisions. Moral judgments include use of child labour and low pay, whilst environmental issues may relate to pollution and sustainability. A typical ethical decision is illustrated where a business must consider the production of a good in a country where there is no minimum wage and weak laws relating to child labour. Production in this country would raise profit and give an advantage against a close rival producing a similar good. What do you think are the decisions that are involved here? Here is another case, this time involving environmental issues. A resource could be developed in a rural area next to a state park. The industry is an extraction industry and there will be considerable changes in the environment. Does knowing that a rival firm are also interested in the development influence the environmental decision? This ends our first podcast on managerial accounting, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening. We wish you success in your studies. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com.